I like long-term storytelling. However, there are people who say you just can't do that kind of thing anymore because the modern audience just doesn't have the attention span for it. But is that really true? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Because today... Before we begin, I want to give a big thank you to all of my amazing Patreon supporters who helped to make this channel possible. And while I'm at it, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters such as Baba Yaga and Geek Power with Aaron B. And now, let's get into the video. With the plethora of additional pay-per-views, cell phones, video games, social media, and not to mention that doggone blasted music television out there, there are plenty of older folks who are quick to say that the attention span of your average fan has shrunk too much to a lot for good old-fashioned storytelling. However, like with a lot of things in professional wrestling, when we stop to really look at the evidence, we might find that the results are not quite what we expect. Okay, let's start by crunching some numbers and take a look at some early WrestleManias, and we'll see how things were really done back then. Now, the first WrestleMania took place on the historic date of March 31st, 1985. The main event saw Hulk Hogan teaming up with Mr. T, going against Roddy Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff. This match came about after the event called The War to Settle the Score, where Orndorff interfered with Hogan's match against Piper and also attacked Mr. T. This took place on February 18th, 1985, giving us less than six weeks of hype. That's not even a month and a half. But you know what? That was the first WrestleMania. Maybe Maybe things were just a bit off since they were just starting out. Let's move ahead to WrestleMania 2, which took place on April 7th, 1986, and saw King Kong Bundy challenge Hulk Hogan. This grudge match was the result of Bundy interfering with Hogan's match against Don Morocco and avalanching the Hulkster, breaking his ribs. This happened on an episode of Saturday Night's main event that took place on March 1st of that year. And that only gives us 36 days of build. All right, forget that. How about we move on to the following year? WrestleMania 3, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant, one of the biggest matches in all of wrestling history. How much time did that get? Well, this one's going to be just a little bit harder to narrow down. Because early on, Andre did once hand over Hulk Hogan's WWF World Heavyweight Championship belt, but not before giving it a real solid stare first. But after that is when things really started to pick up, when Hogan was presented with a trophy to commemorate his three years as WWF World Champion. This was then followed by Andre the Giant getting a slightly smaller trophy as recognition for his 15-year undefeated streak. This resulted in Roddy Piper and Jesse Ventura trying to get to the bottom of the controversy on January 31st. But it would probably be the week after that is when most fans would say that this epic feud actually got underway. Because on February 7th, 1987, that's when Andre the Giant ripped off Hulk Hogan's shirt and revealed that he was aligned with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Although, it wouldn't be until the following week that Hogan would officially make the challenge to Andre. And with WrestleMania happening on March 29th that year, even using the February 7th start date, that only gives us about 50 days of hype. Now, the next year was the tournament for the vacant WWF World title, so we didn't know the main event until that night. But, in case you're curious, the title was vacated on February 3rd. 13th. Moving on, now we have WrestleMania 5. The Mega Powers explode. But when exactly did they explode? Well, they did so on February 3rd, 1989 for their match on April 2nd. Well, that's 57 days of hype, almost two whole months. I have to say that is pretty good. And when it comes to the following year's WrestleMania, WrestleMania 6, well, that received just one less day at 56. And that main event was Champion vs. Champion, Hulk Hogan vs. The Ultimate Warrior. Now, they did stare each other down at the Royal Rumble, but the Ultimate Challenge wasn't actually issued by Hogan until February 3rd and wasn't accepted until February February 10th, giving us 56 days, 8 weeks exactly for their April Fool's Day WrestleMania bout. Now, as you can see, the longest build we had was just under 2 months with 57 days, and that was for Hogan and Macho. And the shortest was only 36 days for WrestleMania 2. But okay, as short as those numbers are, they must feel like an eon compared to what we have today, right? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Alright, starting off with this year, while Edge did win the Royal Rumble back in January, it took forever for him to make the choice to face Roman Reigns, which he did at Elimination Chamber, a February pay-per-view that didn't even exist back in the 80s. Okay, taking that into consideration, let's see how short the time period is going to be between that and WrestleMania. Alright, presumably this year, Roman and Edge are going to occupy the April 10th date. And with Elimination Chamber happening on February 21st, well that gives us... 
just under seven weeks. Um, okay, actually, that's pretty good. But what about last year? You know, with everything happening so last minute under the extenuating circumstances, I'm sure that didn't get enough time. So let's see how long this hype train really was. The main event of WrestleMania 36 featuring Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre aired on April 5th. Andrew McIntyre won the Royal Rumble and then declared that he would challenge Brock Lesnar on February 3rd, giving us a grand total of 61 days. Uh, but this year and last year were unique. Uh, how about we take a look at when things were normal? Back in 2019, WrestleMania 35, the WWE Championship match was between Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. And that was incredibly late in the game because remember, Kofi was a last minute replacement for Mustafa Ali, so they fell into that by complete accident. However, that gauntlet match took place on February 12th, which still gives us 53 days of hype. Ah, but wait, that wasn't the main event that year. The real main event was the triple threat match between Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Ronda Rousey, which began when Becky won the Royal Rumble and declared on the January 28th episode of Monday Night Raw that she would be facing Ronda. Totaling 61 days of buildup. Then in 2018, Roman Reigns was set to face Brock Lesnar after winning the Elimination Chamber match on February 25th, which was less than six weeks away from Mania on April 8th. But Shinsuke Nakamura, on the other hand, announced that he would be choosing to face AJ Styles immediately after winning the Royal Rumble on January 28th, which results in 69 total days of hype. And lastly, for WrestleMania 33, Orton and Bray would also get just under six weeks, as their bout was officially set on February 12th. However, Paul Heyman would make the challenge to Bill Goldberg on Brock Lesnar's behalf on the January 30th episode of Raw, 61 days prior to their April 2nd match. Okay, with the first WrestleManias having the longest build period of only 57 days, but our most recent Manias getting 69 at its peak, I think it's safe to say that the build period during modern times really isn't as short as a lot of people think it is. Now, I'm sure there are a few of you out there who want to make some arguments, because when does a match really start getting hyped? Well, that can depend on who you ask. For example, I'm sure there are some who view the Mega Powers exploding as really starting when they debuted as a team back in SummerSlam 1988. However, just know that sword does cut both ways, as Becky and Ronda's hype train could be said to have started when they originally were booked to go against each other at Survivor Series, and before that, the whole Stone Cold Becky Lynch gimmick really took hold when she went heel also at SummerSlam. And that's not even counting Becky and Charlotte's beef going back to NXT. Furthermore, if you really want to get technical, AJ and Nakamura really started their rivalry back in New Japan in 2016. And all that just goes to show you that for anyone who thinks that WWE really doesn't do long-term storytelling anymore, well, there's more of it than you might think. But you know what? Forget about all the semantics and hair splitting, because I'm not trying to say that there are absolutely no storylines now that are much shorter than they used to be on average in the 80s. However, I'm also not trying to say that there aren't a lot of things that happened last minute back then too. The point is, all in all, the amount of build time that a match gets now is really about the same as it's always been. It's really not that different. However, with that being said, why does it feel like storylines get pushed so quickly nowadays? Well, there are a few reasons for that. First, for many of us in the key demo, when these early WrestleManias happened, we were either toddlers or at least very small children, and in some cases, not even born yet. And for kids, time seems to move by a lot slower than it does when we get older. So naturally, the time between a match being set and a match taking place is going to feel a lot longer, even if it is roughly the same amount of time. And another reason is both something of a plus and a minus, and it's that there is just so much wrestling out there now. Back in the early days, you had your weekend wrestling shows that were an hour, and then you had primetime wrestling, all of which was primarily made up of house show footage, where you would occasionally get updates on what was going on and would rarely, if ever, see the world champion. But now, we see almost every superstar on every single episode of their respective shows every single week. And while these extra appearances are nice and all, they do work to overexpose wrestlers as well. When appearances were more spread out, things seemed to take longer. For example, if I told you to count 10 seconds 6 times, that would feel quicker than telling you to count for a whole minute. And also, these additional beats do work to create another problem too. Think of them as chapters within a book. Every time we see a wrestler, we're expecting their storyline to progress, to advance, but there are only so many notes to play for a wrestling feud. Thus, when we see someone week in and week out giving the same promos and staring down the same rival every single show or sitting down for another boring talk show segment, things are going to get played out real quick. We're gonna 
even get bored of a match before it even happens. Oh, and plus, without good old fashioned jobbers like we used to have, we get a lot of matches that are superstars versus superstars on regular TV. Thus, a lot of pay-per-view bouts are things we've already seen before. Like with Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan, they've gone against each other on numerous occasions before WrestleMania 35. However, in contrast, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant did fight before their WrestleMania 3 encounter, but during a time with less TV and no internet, that fact was much easier to conceal. Oh, and lastly, another reason why it seems like our attention spans are much shorter, well, is because they are, at least according to some studies. With claims saying that in 2000, our average attention span was 12 seconds and now it's only eight. But an attention span is only our period of time that we can concentrate on a particular task without losing focus and getting distracted. So saying that it somehow affects our ability to get invested into a storyline is not entirely accurate. Ultimately, today, we can have long-term storytelling. We deserve it, and we should demand it. And for anyone out there who might tell you that we just don't have the attention span for it, well, tell them to look at the numbers themselves. That's if they actually have the patience for it. Well, there you go, some information about the hype train in professional wrestling. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Dave knows.